So welcome to this episode of PBR TV. Uh, today we've got something really special in store and, and the type of boat that we're looking at today is beautiful. So uh, it's a new Nordstar. So we're going to go and meet Greg. Greg's going to run you through this boat. He's going to put this boat through its paces and I'll get on the other side of the camera so you can see what's going on. Well, here we are on a fantastically sunny day down at Hamble Point Marina um, with MCC Marine because they have just got the latest North Star middleweight in, the 28 Plus, which is a redevelopment of the original North Star 28. And we're going to take her out and put her through her paces and have a good look through this boat, see what she's got to offer. Internally, uh, the wheelhouse, what do I like about the wheelhouse? Um, what I love about the wheelhouse is the rear window which opens up completely and lets in this fantastic um, air current through that comes through and either out through the sunroofs or out through the doors. Uh, the previous 28 didn't have this, in fact it didn't have a window at all. This has really transformed this boat. It, you know, if you're out anchored up somewhere, you're not going to be sitting there sweltering away because you're going to have a lovely breeze coming through table well this is typical to scandinavian wheelhouse design where the wind the table can go from this position all up to the ceiling to get it out of the way um, no wobble no give uh, real no nonsense uh, and perfect for the job that it's designed for um, i like the helm um, it's perfect you sit here it's obvious yeah your hands fall perfectly to the wheel they fit the throttle perfectly and you've got a nice football just where you, you, your feet lie. Um, bow thruster, easily accessible, primary switches there, can be seen easily accessed instead of sometimes as they are stuck behind the wheel where you can't really get to them when you need them in a hurry. Um, you've got the Volvo Penta display there and a lovely good size Simrad multifunction display there that tells you everything you need to know. Yeah, it's compact, it's straightforward, it's got everything you need, and the ergonomics are very good. Of course, being a Scandinavian boat, um, simple things I take very seriously, simple things that are important. In this case, a chart table. Yeah, people tend to forget in this electronic age that you need charts. Yeah, plot your course, work out where you're going, do a bit of old school nav. I like that. Okay, now we'll go below and see what accommodation we've got down below. Okay, we've got a small galley here, full standing headroom, one six foot. So if you're more than six foot three, your head's gonna hit the ceiling. Uh, two ring flush hob, a Thetford flush hob. You've got a, what I'd estimate to be a 40 litre fridge. You've got two drawers to pull out. You've got a nice little stainless steel sink. You've got, so very nicely finished cupboards, joinery. It's veneer, but it's very high quality veneer. The all important heads, complete with shower, pump out toilet, sea toilet of course. Um, boat like this of course is not going to be without such a luxury. Well, the four peak cabin, it's your traditional um, convertible U-shaped double berth. It's virtually as wide as it is long. It's not terribly long, but it will suffice comfortably for two adults. 
There are no hanging lockers. You've got a large mirror. You've got a small storage compartment there for personal effects that you might want to like wallet and all those sort of things you want to keep secure. Uh, you've got plenty of lighting, low level lighting for reading and overhead lighting and of course the escape hatch. Well, you could be easily forgiven for thinking this boat is just a two berth boat. But in fact, it does have a hidden mid cabin. Yeah. Lift up the navigator seat. There it is, the secret passage. Okay, right. I'm not gonna go much further into it. I can get in there. I've got to squeeze in a bit, but of course it's a mid cabin underneath the saloon. It's not gonna have room to jump up and down. It's got a double berth. Um, it's reasonably well lit. It's got a window on, on each side and um, well, it's, it's actually quite a credit to get a cabin in the size of boat where you wouldn't think there was anything at all. Though you can access the boat on either beam because there is a short drop down gateway on each bulwark, most people are going to get on via the bathing platform. It's very easy, it's deep, plenty of room. I understand it's an extension on the original uh, North Star 28, which has a slightly shorter bathing platform. And of course, big bathing platforms are the way forward. Everyone wants a big bathing platform, not so much for bathing, but getting on the boat. And it works well. Very sturdy transom gate. You've got a very sturdy latch. It gives you access. In you go. Obviously there are options for teak decking, which I understand this boat is going to have. There's plenty of storage here for warps and fenders. Obviously you've got a fender, um, quadruple fender cage here. Typically Scandinavian. No Scandinavian would ever build a boat with a fender cages on the transom. Lots of storage inside the transom. Fantastic engine access to the big D6. No problem getting to any of the service items whatsoever. Very important. Guard rails, just where you need them. Okay, you're not likely to fall over there. They're just the right height where your hands fall. Foredeck. The foredeck's deeply inlaid. You've got 15 inches of bulwark all the way around. The anchor locker's pretty serious. It's very nicely finished in there. Okay, no rough mouldings whatsoever. Masses of anchor chain, more than you're ever likely ever gonna need. Was a very serious windlass. what I'd expect from a North Star 28 Plus. Well, here we are now. We're actually out on the water on the new uh, North Star 28 Plus. Uh, and it's a time to see how this new hull um, actually performs. Apparently it's been improved and tweaked over the original North Star 28. The ride is meant to be a bit drier, a bit quieter, um, and more efficient. With regards to efficiency, it's got Volvo's latest D6 380, which is, is a massive rework on the original Volvo D6. Apart from having the latest generation DPI Duoprop drive, the engine, the injection system, has been massively re reworked to give a much torquier, broader spread of power, and a much higher level, level of efficiency. So let's see how she performs. This boat is basically designed, rather I should say this engine system, this propulsion system is designed from the start to provide a drive and shoot sort of experience for someone who doesn't need to think about fettling this boat with regards to trim tabs from the word go. So how does it achieve this? Well it's got Zipway automatic trim tabs and they are tapping the bow down for the moment, we're off, okay, and then tapping them, adjusting the tab setting as we power up through the spectrum. So we're now, well, we're touching on 33 knots, and I've not done anything with the trim tabs. I can override it, I can go to manual, if I want to fettle the last knot or so out of her, but in reality, are you really going to bother to do that? You, you might do if, you, if you're a bit keen, but in all honesty, this makes for an easy cruising and easy sports mode driving, especially when you want to turn it and tuck it into a tight turn, like now. Like a lot of wheelhouse boats, you need to have a damn good look before you turn across your port quarter. 
this is not as bad as some for that inevitable blind spot that you get given for doing a hard port side turn. But you still need to think about it before you throw it into a turn. It's very sure footed. We're now just running through some ferry chop, the Southampton water, and the trim chaps, the zip wakes, they're doing what they're saying on the tin, they're keeping that bow down and we're cutting a nice, even, steady path. The reality is, with this boat, you just don't really know how fast you're going. I think I'm doing 24 knots, I'm not, I'm doing 34. And that's not just because I'm in a wheelhouse boat, it's because it's a very soft and quiet hull. And I like to say, I think they've actually done what they've set out to achieve, and that is producing a quieter ride. Yeah, the stone drive holds well in the turns, there's no two ways about it. It's very sure footed um, and very easy to steer. Sound levels are quiet, engine sound levels that is. The sea state is moderate, so I'm not expecting to hear too much from that point of view. But because noise from the engine, soundproofing and the actual noise produced by the D6 has certainly taken this boat a leap forward over its predecessor. electronic steering system that Volvo have developed for the new D6 is impressive. It is fingertip sports boat steering, but it doesn't run away with itself after a hard turn. It centers very quickly and it's a credit to the boat's hull that it immediately sits center on a steady course without any inclination to oversteer, just waiting to be thrown into yet another hard turn. Okay, we're now at what I'd call sensible, popular family cruising speed. Um, two and a half thousand RPM on the new D6. We're doing 21.5 knots and we've got just under a third of a knot tied against us. Very, very quiet, very, very relaxed. If I wasn't looking at the instrumentation, I think I was doing about 15 knots. And the fuel burn at this level is very efficient. Push her up a bit, slightly more spirited family cruising speed, shall we say. We're now gonna push up to about 2800 RPM, which is the top of the torque curve for the new Volvo D6. So really the maximum point which is going to be given a very good level of fuel efficiency. We're now doing 26.3 knots with a third of a knot of tide against us. The ride is very composed, it's very quiet, it's a sort of speed, especially in this moderate sea condition, I can sit back and, and have a very chill out conversation with my family knowing that I'm not burning too big a hole in my bank account. Then things need to get a little bit more spirited so we're now up to 3,000. I wouldn't quite call this fast cruising because this boat is capable of a fast cruising speed beyond 28 knots. We're now doing at 3,000 RPM. 
We're now running just over 3,000 RPM. We've got a bit of tide on the stern and we're doing just over 30 knots. Very, this is what I'd call a comfortable fast cruising. Sea conditions permitting. Again, very composed, very quiet. Okay, let's see what she's like accelerating from a standstill up to 20 knots and then 30 knots. Zip weights kick in, trimming that bow down. Yeah, 20 knots already. Now we're hitting 30 knots. Very, very quick. That's the advantage of zip weights, amongst many other things. Well, that wraps up our sea trial on the North Star 28 Plus. What can I say in conclusion from a driving perspective? It's a great boat to drive. It's got a fantastic hull. It's very solid. It steers very quickly. It cuts through the wake without any complaints. It's very quiet. The power delivery from the new Volvo 380 horsepower D6, uh, coupled with the DPI dual prop, prop stern drive, is, is very, very good. Um, what really improves the ride, the driving experience considerably, is the um, automatic zip wake trim tabs. And they just tab the bow down. The moment you put the power on, you climb out the hole onto the plane, you're gone and a brace of shakes. You don't even think about it. Before you know it, you're doing 20 knots and then you're doing 30 knots. And then of course, the zip wakes automatically adjust and trim accordingly as you power up through the spectrum all the way up to its top speed of 35 knots. Cruising really is anything from 20 to 30 knots. Whether you want to go quiet family cruising, you can do that at 25 knots. You can easily hold a very quiet conversation. At 30 knots, it's still very quiet, very, very relaxed. She steers quickly, so she's also a great sports boat. And accommodation wise, she does a good job of actually packing in quite a bit into what is meant to be a 28 foot boat. Yeah, yeah, I like her.